la inauguración oficial del Queen Jones Museum tuvo lugar el pasado domingo día 26 de febrero en honor a Queen Jones, quien fue un respetado educador y líder cívico y primer director de la escuela secundaria Lincoln High School en el año de 1923, convirtiendo a dicha escuela como la segunda escuela afroamericana acreditada en el estado de Florida. El museo se encuentra en el sitio donde estaba la casa de Queen Jones y la comunidad fomentó este plan como deseo de poder honrar al señor Jones y a otros líderes. Desde ahora, este sitio donde estuvo la antigua casa del profesor Jones se convierte en un museo. Este lugar se registró como un lugar histórico en la Florida el día 27 de enero del año 2010. Santos is our vice chair, and he can attest to this, that when we sit in our agenda review, we see the passion behind these projects. Uh, we see our staff so emotional sometimes that there's tears. Uh, sometimes so giddish when a, 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 it's been finished. Uh, so I got here this morning, and Sarah goes, have you seen me inside the house? No, boom, we are inside. It is absolutely beautiful in there, and it's amazing. Uh, when I think about Sarah, Stephanie, and the entire CRA staff, and Anthony, and you wonder why your city commissioners and your CRA board are so excited because this is one example of what we're doing in our entire city. We're redeveloping it. We're rethinking about how we're doing a city and we're making it citizen-centered. We're actually giving it back to its citizens. So I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time up here. I can just tell you in researching uh, Mr. Jones, I was amazed that he was an overachiever in everything. When he saw a challenge, he didn't just hit it. He hit it beyond including 104 years of age. And his young man son here, I just had the privilege of meeting at 96. Uh, I don't know what you're eating or drinking, but I want some of it. But I would honestly say, if Mr. Jones were here today, and meet Anthony, Sarah, and the CRA team, I think he would look you dead in the eye, shake your hand, and say, job well done. Because this is not just a building. This is a legacy. This is a man that really was a trailblazer was a man that saw a challenge and he conquered it. So as you walk through this building, please, the ones that don't know the story, embrace and enjoy the story, but make sure you tell it again. Because some story is unbelievable that this man was able to achieve as much as he's been able to achieve and to leave this legacy. And the CRA project is definitely one of our jewels, without a doubt, because this is to honor a human being that needs to be honored and should be looked up to by all people of Gainesville and Lancaster mm -hmm. County. So thank you very much for this beautiful day. And again, it's just so much fun to be part 
of anything like this. I mean, as, as elected officials, all the hard we get work of credit. Yeah. Anthony clear knows from the office that any project in his district will be treated as a capital project, to which he and I have had many spirited conversations surrounding this project. His passion is indelible. Our District 1 Commissioner, Mr. Charles Gunn. Good afternoon. It's a, a great honor to stand before you and say that the blood of the Lincoln High School Big Red Terriers runs in my veins. And in the past, when we were at Lincoln, when other schools that we competed against heard that the Big Red was coming, believe me, there was a fear that went over the campus wherever we were visiting. And I wish that I could be saying that in jest, but I'm not. There was a, a love that existed at Lincoln. There was a legacy that was set out by Dr. Jump a long time ago. My mother graduated from that high school. All of my family did, and I'm quite sure a lot of other people's families did. But in that process, they created a kind of momentum and a kind of love and dedication that you see in me today. I look around and I see some of the people I went to Lincoln High School with, and I just want to say thank you to those who were ahead of me because you inspired me to work as hard as I did. And my work is still not done. Now, I'm a proud graduate, and I tell people this all the time. I've went to a lot of schools and have diplomas from a lot of schools, but I only recognize two. Lincoln High School, as I'm a proud graduate of Lincoln, and then I also tell them that I also went to the greatest university in the state of Florida that sits on the highest of the seven hills in Tallahassee. <laughs> and I say that because everybody who has ever attended an HBCU. They go to bed every night, and their last prayer is, let me wake up and be like the March of 100 and the Florida and them rappers. <laughs> Today is certainly a proud and somewhat emotional day for me, because I can say this, I had a chance to talk to Dr. Jones before he passed on to glory, and ask him one question. I said, Dr. Jones, how does it feel to be able to live this long? He told me that uh, living this long has its deficits. And I said, well, what are those? He said, you lose all of your contemporaries. You have no one to talk to. No one who can relate to your, your story. And we forget about that when you know, we do what we do in life. And when you grew up in a segregated neighborhood with a segregated school, people give us the impression that we lost something, we missed something. I tell them all the time, I didn't miss a thing. As a matter of fact, if I could do it again, I would. That's what's missing today, is that we don't have that. When I go around and talk to young men, about their education, because that's paramount to me, and that's why I started my magazine, which is 43 years old, Black College Monthly, which is now a national collegiate magazine. I said, what I want for you to do, what I want you to do is do this. Read a book. Don't be booked on 39th. <laughs> because you'll get more out of reading that book than you'll ever get joining a gang and having your fingerprints taken at the county jail. And they get it. I want to say this with all sincerity that uh, Miss C. Wright was right when she said we had some spirited discussion. Because I, I just believe that why should it take so long for projects in our area to come to fruition? And I would push it. I would go to Sarah and push it. I would go to whoever I had to and push it. 
because I didn't want to be gone and not have a chance to experience this. And I want to say to people like you know, Albert White, who was a good quarterback at Lincoln, Aaron Green, great quarterback, student at Lincoln, some of the other people, Mr. Ford out there that I recognize, you know, they were the examples of what A. Quinn Jones was. For a man to work his way through college, like A. Quinn did. And some kids today want financial aid or we don't go. I don't want school. I want to be a rapper. And I said, rap about what? <laughs> I'm just a realist who was born at the right time in the right place. And I want to also acknowledge Mr. Ed Dix, who worked hard on this project. And he'll tell you, I worked him too. I come right here and be on him and asking him, okay, what's taking you so long, Ed? And I had the pleasure of coaching him at the boys' club. But let me, let me, let me say this. Uh, Aquin Jones' accomplishments and standards uh, committed us to where we are today and the future success of the A. Quinn Jones Museum and Cultural Center. This museum also recounts a time in history that, though often daunting, heightened the perseverance and determination of a community. It sounds like the A. Quinn Jones Museum not only documents a rich heritage, but educates our youth on the importance of that heritage. And I want to say today that I went and dug up something that I want to donate to the museum. It's a copy of the Lincolnian that we published in our school when we were at Lincoln High School. And I'm quite sure every big red black terrier remember this newspaper. And I also went back and had to go deep. And I got a picture of the first marching band at Lincoln High School under the direction of Mr. Jerry, Dr. Jerry Miller, who was my band director as well. And I want to close by saying this. If you ever want to accomplish anything, if you ever want to be something, never start from the back of the line. You paid your dues. The back of the line doesn't fit you anymore. Amen. You deserve to be in the front of the line. You deserve to get mm -hmm. everything in every quarter that you desire. And if you think of yourself less than that, then the back of the line is where you should be. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Donnelly. As with most of the projects that are undertaken by the CRA, there comes that time when we transition the project to other departments. The A. Queen Jones Museum and Cultural Center is no exception. Over the next couple of years, we'll be working with Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs to create a seamless turning over the reins to those persons who can give it the love and expertise expertise, excuse me, that will be needed to sustain this treasure for decades to come. At this time, I would like to have our Parks, Recreation, Cultural and Affairs Director, Mr. Steve Phillips. Thank you, Stephanie. Hello, everyone. How are you today? Beautiful day. As all my colleagues before me, I am very excited about this, the realization of the Aquin Jones Museum and Cultural Center. Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs is and has been committed to this project since its inception. We're excited about adding this museum to our cultural and historical facilities and providing programming and events to speak to this community and Gainesville as a whole. We are currently in the process of hiring a museum coordinator, someone who will not only possess the necessary experience of a museum professional, but will understand the heartbeat of the community and what the namesake of the center represents. It's an honor to be part of this uh, dedication, and I thank each and every one of you for coming out today and sharing in this moment this occasion. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Whenever you honor someone, the way we are honoring Mr. Jones today, there is a family. A family who wants to make sure that their loved one is shown as they and those who love them see them. The Jones family is amazing. Mr. Oliver Jones is no exception. He allowed us to prod and pick information from him. He gave us access to all of their family memorabilia and talked with me on many different occasions about his father. 
Mr. Jones, at the age of 96, remembers everything and everybody. <laughs> Making our research not only easier, but it helped me to understand who the man really was and what was important to him making it easier for me to convey to the team what we needed to do. I was very pleased when he accepted my request to say a few words here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Oliver Jones. a few things pertaining to my father and a few other things too that were errors and, and I've tried to correct it and maybe still won't listen to what I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> my father, A. Craig Jones, was born March the 3rd, 1893 in Quincy, Florida. The, the date of his death was December 2nd, 1997. At that time he was 104 years old, three months from the year 105. In connection with his education, uh, he went to school at Quincy, and uh, the education for Negro was afforded through the eighth grade, and no further than that. I'll tell you more about, about that, even for Lincoln, too. He went to Florida and him, and got his, his uh, education grades nine through tw 12 from Fam C, Fam C High School, because he went at Quincy. Only the education went no further than through the eighth grade for Negroes. So he went to Florida and then in the high school department and finished uh, and got his high school diploma from Fam C High School. He went there from 1907 to 1911. Then, from 1911 to 1915, he was in the college department and received his bachelor's degree from Florida a &M College. It wasn't uh, Florida a &M University at that time. And in fact, it was Florida a &M College even when I finished from Florida a &M College. <laughs> bachelor's degree. Okay. Then in 1935, he completed his uh, master's degree from Hampton Institute, Hampton, Virginia. He did further work towards a, a, a doctorate degree from New York University. He had difficulty in getting off from school to complete it, so he did not complete it, not because he couldn't do the work, but he had to remain on the job uh, during the summer. I tried to correct this years ago, it was hard for people to understand, but I don't know, I guess I was uh, too small, I guess. But uh, in connection with his education, now he was very small, very, very small. And he did not complete it, not because he couldn't get the work, but because he couldn't get off the job. Both of his sons, Equin Jr. and myself, both of us received our doctorate degree. And uh, he is the one. He's the one who encouraged us to continue our education because he sent all of his children uh, to college. So all were, at, all were in education, and even my two sisters, they were in education also. And one even uh, taught at the junior college in Ocala and whatever. So he, he was uh, always interested in education and certainly encouraged, gave us encouragement too. Now, in connection with what he did after he received his education. All around this house right here, he'd always tell us uh, a, a number of schools were accredited, Negro schools were accredited. But uh, Lincoln High was the second Negro school that was accredited by the State Department of Education. The first one was uh, in Palatka and Lincoln. Or second. So he would always tell us that this, in this house, we laugh, he said, uh, yeah, uh, uh, 
the second one, Negro School in, in uh, the state of Florida, Curtis Valley State Department of Education. That school was, he said, was not in Jacksonville. He said, it wasn't, it wasn't in Miami, it wasn't in Tampa, West Palm Beach. He was right there, came to Lincoln High. So he was very proud of that, he was proud of that. The other thing is, when the school was accredited, there was still difficulty in receiving a, or getting a teacher, a Sunday in the foreign language, and that was a requirement for accreditation, uh, and chemistry and physics and what have you. So any time he could not get a, a foreign language teacher, he was certified in all of these that I'm talking about. He taught. So he taught me Latin, even myself. He taught me Latin. But he also taught chemistry, physics, English, social studies, social studies and what have you. But the important thing is there were many who taught and <laughs> out of field. But he was in field. He was accredited by all of those things. He was very really smart. He was very, really, very really smart. And he gave us a very and an encouragement from him. He also taught several summers at Florida A&M. Mm -hmm. so he, he, he was a teacher at Florida A&M for, uh, for several summers. That's why he was also outstanding. And the other is that uh, his training and what he did and what have you was not just uh, limited to the school, but even to the churches too. He was a trustee at the Greater Bethlehem A.M.E. Church. And he, also, and he also was the superintendent of the Sunday School. So he gave us encouragement uh, also even at home. He was an outstanding educator in general and not just limited to just the school itself. And uh, I'm very proud of my father. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Mm -hmm. Can I have um, Sarah Badolfin and Steve Phillips come up? As many of you have heard today, this has been a long time coming. <laughs> and um, in speaking with Mr. Jones, he would always ask me, how's it going over there? How's it going over there? <laughs> it's coming, Mr. Jones, I promise it's coming. And so we would like to take this opportunity to present um, Mr. Jones and his, and his family with a key to the Aquin Jones Museum. So his family is welcome any time in the morning. And we just thought it would be a great gesture for us from the days of the CRA and the Parks and Rural Cultural Affairs as we move forward with this museum. A lot of people ask me, Stephanie, why are you having a ribbon cutting in a dedication ceremony on a Sunday afternoon? We at the CRA are a little different. And if you know me, I'm definitely a little different. And speaking with Mr. Jones and spending a lot of time with his family and going into different homes of a lot of our um, longtime residents of Gainesville, trying to get information and trying to understand how this museum should be shaped. Every person I spoke to talked about how the church was an important part of their lifestyle. We talked about the after Sunday dinners. We talked about how a lot of the activities were maintained or happened at the church. So I found it robbery for us not to have this particular dedication during a time that meant so much to the Aquin Jones family. So I thank each of you for finding it very important to be here on your Sunday afternoon to share in this momentous occasion with us here today. So I would like to applaud each and every one of you for coming out today. The Sustainable Design Group, WPJ Construction. This was my first major construction project, and I have to thank each one of those groups because they taught me a lot. We learned along the way, and I hope I was just as sweet and wonderful to them as they were to me. Um, definitely, I have to um, thank um, our CRA staff, um, Sarah, Nigel, 
to Jessica, Michael, Trish, Ori. I'm looking at the seats around the office. <laughs> Suzanne, uh, Sarit, Andrew, everybody at the CRA. Did I? I don't hear it. Okay. 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 So I just want to make sure I thank each one of them for helping me and jumping in where they could and being here today um, and helping us set up and all the other. The pro the, all the jobs that had to happen. I would like to thank Michelle Parks, Russell Etling, and Charles Zidar from the Parks and Recreation Cultural Affairs, and Mr. Steve Phillips for teaching me about starting, developing, and running a museum because I've learned way more about museums than I thought I was going to ever know, and it's, it's just amazing. I also would like to thank each of the families who allowed me to come to their homes, the Mickles, um, oh my God, I spent a long time in this Mickle house. Um, and oh my god, it was just so many different ones, I can't call them all on the top of my head. But allow me actually though to come into their homes, they sat with me, they showed me their pictures, they talked to me about all different types of things that happened in Gainesville, and I just want to thank them all for taking the time to allow me to share some of their memories. Um, I want to thank the ribbon cutting sponsors for today. Um, I went outside of my general budget and I hit the community and I asked different people to support this ribbon cutting today. I have to think, I've got us, I don't know what's the top, is platinum the top? But if platinum is the top, then GRU is our platinum sponsor here today. And I want to thank Mr. Eric Larson and Yvette Carter from the um, Community Relations Group. I also want to thank ENI, and I also want to thank Passage Family Church for browning out those sponsorships just today to have this particular ribbon cutting. So I want to thank each one of them. I would like to thank the Florida African American Heritage Preservation Network who provided us with a, a grant, a $14,000 grant for the Aikman Jones Museum. And I would like to also thank the Wirehouser Company who um, presented us with an $8,000 grant in order to see that this happen. So we had a lot of companies who, a lot of organizations and agencies who, who believed in what we were doing and wanted to see come to fruition. I want to thank let me see one of these I want to do first. I, I also want to take the opportunity to thank one of my former co-workers, Mr. Malcolm Kind. Because he, Malcolm was the project manager prior to me. And as me being, this is my first project, he did, I would call him at night. He was mad, but he would answer the phone. And I called him at night and asked, you know, let me ask you about this. And he took the time to sit down with me and kind of show me where he left off and guided me. And even today, even though he's away from us now at the CRA in Tampa, he still answered my phone calls and made sure I didn't forget anybody. And, and I just want to take the opportunity to thank him. But the last person I want to thank today is an outstanding woman that you all need to know. And her name is Mary Anna Murphy. And Mary Anna is my design consultant. So it's one thing to have all this information, but it's another thing to know what to do with it. And um, Mary Anna, would you please stand? I, I just I just would be remiss not to let her know. But she's from St. Petersburg, but she came up and she helped me and she showed me how things need to go. And you know, Stephanie, no, I, I know you want that there, but it's just not going to work. But that's what I want. But it's not going to work. So we had spirited conversations, too, that she actually always won. Thank you for being here. So I just would like to thank her because she spent a, we spent a lot of time together, a lot of phone calls. And she just was an impressive designer. And she just did, as you will see, just an amazing job with this museum. So I would like to thank everybody for giving, taking time to listen to me on the microphone. I'm going to turn it over now to um, our mayor of Gainesville, and he's going to say a few words, and then we're going to go into the ribbon cutting. What I'm going to ask at, at the um, end of Mr. Poe's comments, if our um, dais would, would start walking over up the ramp to the front of the house, and then we'll have the ribbon cutting. As they're going, I'm going to give you all some, um, some information on how to go through the house today, because we have a lot of people, and we got a little house. Okay. So I'm going to give you some instructions on how we're going to do this flow um, after that. So right now, I would like to introduce to you the mayor of Gainesville, Mr. Lauren Poe. Thank you so much, uh, Stephanie, and thank you all for making it out on this glorious day, the day that he made for us. The advantage of going last is most all the important things have already been said, and so I know that you're thankful for that. Um, I do want to put one thought in your mind. My, my academic training is in history, and uh, at, at a recent uh, meeting with uh, Professor Ibram X. Uh, Kendi, who, if you have not read his book, from the beginning, 
a history of racist ideas in America, you need to get on it because it is one of the most remarkable books that I've ever read. And it just won the National Book Award for nonfiction. He's a professor right here at University of Florida. And I, in our conversation, um, I asked him, well, what is the role of the historian? What is the importance of the, of the historian in our society? And he gave such an elegant answer. And I'm paraphrasing, of course. Uh, but he said, the purpose of the historian is to help us better understand our past so we can better shape our future. So we can right past wrongs. So we can bend the arc towards justice when it has not bent that direction in the past. And that is why this home and everything it represents is such an important part of Gainesville's legacy. Because it helps us better order our future so we can create that community, that city, that we know Prof. Jones worked so hard for his entire life and that he wanted to be left behind. So please keep that thought in mind, not just today as you visit this incredible uh, museum and, and uh, part of his legacy, um, but remember it well into the future as you bring people here from, from all around our state um, so that they can better understand and better be those agents of change that he worked so hard for his entire life. Uh, so with that, it is my uh, honor to welcome everybody over to the front of the building. Um, if the commissioners would kind of go up and, and uh, gather around the ribbon, and then we'll get everybody else up there. And we hope that you have a wonderful said, we'll... time. And also, y'all, my mama. As, as soon as they right. cut the ribbon, we're going to take your picture yeah, right. here. That'll be posted to the Facebook, to the city, and to the radio station. Hello. And then you'll go up Hello. at the national a couple at a time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you. 